The series starts with a bang, kind of like at the beginning of the universe. In a village engulfed in fire, we see two kids, Yukito and Jingi, running for their lives. As they are about to reach the ferry, Jingi promises to keep Yukita safe. At the port, they meet an old man who tells them to catch the ferry, but when Jingi asks about his companions, he tells them not to wait as their return is not guaranteed. Back at the source of the fire, we see Makoto, Yukito's father and Jingi's teacher, face to face with a fire demon. Makoto laughs at the fire demon and tells it to know when to fold and walk away. On the other hand, we also see Harauki getting scolded by Aka for carrying him away from the battle zone. But when he turns to Harauki, he witnesses his burnt state. Many years later in the mainland city of Tokyo, a grown Yukito gets a letter from a man named Sanji, who claims to be a friend of Yukito's father. Sanji apologizes for keeping him in foster care, and says that he wants to bring him back after he graduates middle school. But Yukito has no memory of the man. Yukito goes to sleep, and he gets a recurring dream where he is underwater. There he feels calmer than outside as he's someone who avoids interaction. Just then, suddenly a hand comes in and pulls him out, waking him up. This is new. Next day at a middle school graduation ceremony, as everyone is saying their goodbyes and planning to hang out and party, Yukito is alone and ready to leave. Just then, his teacher calls on him from behind to congratulate him and asks him about his plans to move. He informs her about the letter from Sanji offering to be his guardian back in his hometown. She worries about him and asks if he is okay going back after they left him alone for so long, to which Yukito seems fine as he doubts his life will change anywhere. As he leaves, he thinks about how after his father's death, people around him were all nice, and he was never treated badly, so he blames himself for being all alone. While walking, other students are staring at someone and talking about them. Yukito raises his gaze to look at him and it turns out to be Jingi drinking loads of beer. But Yukito does not recognize him and thinks that he's just another troublemaker. Jingi notices him and jumps to meet him. The drunk Jingi does not make a good impression on Yukito. Jingi tries to introduce himself, but Yukito avoids the conversation and walks away pushing him away. Yukito's denial doesn't convince Jingi and he follows him. When Yukito keeps insisting, Jingi jumps on him and throws him into the river. Jingi waits for something to happen as Yukito keeps on drowning deep under. Just as he starts panicking, his powers kick in making a whirlpool in the river. Yukito remembers his past experiences and tries hard to stay calm. Then, Jingi does something and suddenly it all stops, and Yukito emerges safely on the surface of the water. Yukito questions Jingi if he was the one who stopped the water, which Jingi ignores and gets ready to leave. Jingi casts a spell on Yukito, who gets engulfed by a backpack and suddenly wakes up on a ferry in the middle of the ocean. Jingi greets him and congratulates him on graduating and offers him a drink. But Yukito replies that he's not of legal drinking age. The ferry captain is amused as he informs Yukito that Jingi is famous for his wild rides on their island too. When asked about the islands, Jingi finally reveals that they are going to the Ayaka Islands where Yukito grew up until he was five years old and had that incident at the beginning of the anime. Jingi gives him his back for a change of clothes, which confuses him as he questions what happened earlier. Jingi finally introduces himself properly and tells him he is older than him, and Yukito's father, his master was a father figure to him, which furthermore confuses him. Just then, they hear a train horn and witness a spirited away style train running on the ocean. The ferryman says that it connects the seven islands of Ayaka. They dock on the island, and Yukito feels the strange air on the island. Jingi asks him if the scenarios take him back, but Yukito does not seem to remember much of his childhood. As they climb up some stairs, Yukito is greeted by Amamiya, the landlord of his childhood home, and Sanji the mayor and Yukito's father's friend who sent him the letter earlier. The car ride along the island with beautiful scenery captivates him. While Amamiya is briefing him about the facilities of the island, he suddenly sees a bubble of water flying across their car. As he turns to see it, Jingi's question makes him miss it. At the house, Jingi asks him if he remembers anything, but nothing seems to look familiar to Yukito. He even questions if Makoto is his biological father. Amamiya tells him about Makoto being a laymaster who maintained the harmony of the islands. Yukito gets confused by the words laymaster, which Jingi explains as the people with extraordinary powers like themselves. While discussing this, Yukito reveals that Jingi shoved him into his bag, infuriating Amania and Sanji. Sanji informs Yukito that Jingi was Makoto's third student, and his first two are much more capable than him. So, Jingi complains not to be compared with his brothers. This conversation explains Yukito's powers, but Jungi informs him he doesn't even know the basics. All he has is brute force. Yukito then asks about his mother, which puts Amamiya in a tight position. 
but the free-mouthed Jingyi utters that everyone was so shocked when Makoto suddenly brought a kid home. Sanji suddenly talks out Yukito's life in the foster home, which makes Yukito ask why he was brought back. Yukito finds that Sanji was acting according to his father's will, and that even they did not know the reason behind his instructions. Explaining all this, Sanji apologizes to Yukito, and asks if he would be willing to live with them, to which he agrees, saying that this won't change anything. That evening, as he looks around his room, he comes across the bubble again when he opens his window. Jingi explains from behind that it is a Mitama and this one is harmless. He also tells him to get used to them as they are all around the island. Jingi questions him about his barriers against other people and his attitude and belief that nothing is going to change, and tells him he should not be so rude towards others. Yukito agrees to apologize to Amamiya and Sanji, but refuses to apologize to Jingi as he was far more rude than he was. Jingi catches his deflection and brings him back, making him admit he does not want to get close to anyone. Jingi tries to make him open up. Yukito tells him about the time on a riverside picnic when a kid was bullying him, and he got really mad. In the blink of his eye, the river had attacked the kid. He admits that he did not know the reason why that was happening, but it was his doing, and that happened several times, making him want to keep distance from people. He thinks that as he is alone, his emotions are stable, and it's the only way he can live his life. Yukito ends his sad monologue only to notice Jingyi not listening and playing on his phone. This makes him really mad so he walks out. He tries to calm himself and starts thinking nobody till now had come close to him as he kept his distance, but now the situation had changed. Suddenly he spots a Mitama who falls into the water and a huge gush shoots out. A face comes out of the water and tried to attack Yukito. Jingyi saves him and says that it's an Ara Mitama, which is like the bad version of normal cute Mitamas. It was probably attracted to Yukito's gloomy mood. Saying that he'll show the abilities of Makoto's third student, he activates his lay mastery. A golden light covers his hand and he jumps towards the Aramitama, exploding it in one shot. Yukito is amazed by what he just saw, and Jingi is happy with the reaction. But the Aramitama forms its shape again, ready for round two. So this time, Jingi throws Yukito into its watery body, and he gets trapped inside. Yukito thinks about how Jingi came out of nowhere, annoyed him so much and now he's about to kill him. This makes him very, very angry. His eyes turn blue and his powers activate, exploding the Aramitama from the inside. Then his water powers attack Jingyi, and Yukito becomes sad that he hurt another person. But Jingyi uses a spell and dissolves Yukito's powers with ease. Yukito is amazed and asked how he stopped his water powers. But Jingyi does not reply, and instead says that he's scared of his own powers. But it's no one's fault. If he does not want to get out of control, then he should train to control them. He even offers to teach him. Just then, the Aramitama disintegrates into golden dust. Jingi says that it has not become purified. Then, Jingi tells him not to push people away and to open himself up in front of the adults and bumps his fist on Yukito's head. Yukito gets a flashback of his childhood and remembers that he used to have a brother figure like Jingi. Jingi says that they should have a drink to celebrate. Yukito also decides to open up more. So, he openly kicks Jingi into the water, saying that he is not of legal age for drinking. Meanwhile, Haruaki gets a magical letter, and he finds out that Yukito is back in town. Haruaki himself has become a teacher, and he has disciples of his own. Elsewhere, Aka shoots a Mitama and squishes its fire. He also has a student of his own. Back to the main boys, Yukito and Jingi go back home, and this time, Yukito talks to Amamiya in a more friendly way. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.